Hi, welcome back. This is Donna with ABC Cake Decorating Supplies. We are on the last part of our cake journey for our tiered occasion cakes. Now that you know how to, to tear cakes and you know how to make beautiful cakes, you are going to be asked to make an anniversary cake, a wedding cake, a quinceanera cake, a special occasion cake. I'm going to show you how to take all of the information you have learned and combine it into a beautiful centerpiece. It's going to, the tears are whatever, you're going to have tears of joy making this cake. So first I want to sh shut this off so you can hear me. The fountains are cool, but they can be noisy. Also a side note, if you do add color to your fountain, color the water first before you add it to your fountain. Don't add the drops into your fountain. Okay. What we've got here is we've got a different type of, of pillar system. It, this one's a little bit more fancy. It's got this engraved uh, plastic, which makes it really kind of pretty. These here are also a different style. Most of them come 18 inch plates and you can always put a larger cake on them. How these work, basically just like that 4th of July cake that we had, you've got your two plates and you have your pillars. Just because you have a large cake, that doesn't mean that you have to put a fountain underneath it. You could put fruit, you could put a statue. I thought what would be cute, because I just thought he was so cute I couldn't pass him up. We're gonna take our little bird and we're gonna put him in here. So he would be really cute if you're having a tiki party or something and you just want this little added special type of table, table art. We're gonna put him in there. Now sometimes these are a little flimsy and if you want to, you can just add a little dab of hot glue just to hold them in place and then they pop right back off. So that, that makes it nice. But sometimes you'll find that they're a little clumsy and they'll start to fall. And usually you put whatever you want on there first in there. And we'll start over here. And like I say, these, these can become a little clumsy. You can kind of turn them to lock them a little bit. And since they're not cooperating, we're gonna make them cooperate. So we'll go like this. And then you take your plate and you can get these round or square. So whichever one, is on sale or you prefer you like better. So there we are. Now if you want, if you have the round ones but you want a square board, you just take a square board, put it on top, and you're ready to go. So that is basically how you've achieved that. They work the same way, they just plug in. You just put in your, your plate underneath it or whatever design you want under there, and you're ready to go. Now what I want to do is go a little bit more into stacking the cakes so you kind of know what, what's happening inside your cake. First thing you need to do is decide how big do I want my cake. And then stacking them, there's really no rule. You can go an inch in, you can go two inches in, you can go four inches in, depending upon how you want to stack your cakes, how big of a lip you want. If you were gonna put a cascade of flowers or something down here, you may want a larger lip so that the flowers can cascade and you have a bigger edge. Maybe you just wanna put flowers around the edge. You may not want a lip so big. You may have little figurines or, or a bridal party that you wanna put in there. You may need a bigger ledge. Just whatever they, the customer would want or if they leave it up to you, whatever you wanna do, just, just think and use your creativeness to, to create. We have our cake board. We have our cake. This here is our stack cake. This here is our cake with our push-in pillars, a little bit different than the other two cakes that we did. And then we have our top cake. When we are doing another cake on top of this, you've got a couple different ways you can do this with the cake sitting on top. One is the way that we talked earlier, if you, if you went through, and this is on the Halloween cake. You push it in. First, let's say that this is gonna be the next size cake. So you have something here so that you can mark it. 
And you can mark it however you want. I'm just going to use this. Actually, this guy will work. You just need something. And we're just going to, and you can even kind of, even in your icing, this even works better. You can just go around your cake board with your icing. And now I have my ring of where my next cake is going to go in. You can either sharpen the edge, put it in like I did here, you know, and then you mark it, bring it out and cut it. You have that option. In fact, let's go ahead and do that just so you can see the differences here in case you don't remember or didn't catch the last video. And we're going to mark it, bring it here. And like I said in the last video, if you're going to do it this way, you want to take this, measure these, and mark them all the same so that they're the same height. If you notice, this cake is a little caved in, so you want to make sure that these are sitting nice and flush. Once you put icing on it, it would pretty much straighten it out, but I just want to show. Now, if you don't want, and some people don't like to put wooden skewers in their cake, you can also use, this is a straw method. Here, they're kind of flimsy, but this way they're very strong. You can push this in. And as I do this, I'm doing between an inch, inch and a half. If, if they're a little closer, a little farther away, that's okay. There, there's real no, no science to it, other than you just wanna make sure you have enough. Then we're gonna mark this one. If you're wanting to use these, you just cut it with scissors. And then you push that one in there. And then again, you measure them all the same and go that way. If you want, you can use just regular drinking straws. This way, again, they're very strong. These, however, the diameter is smaller. So I don't tend to use those on a cake this large because you need so many of them. Where these, the radiuses are bigger, so, you, so the area it's covering is a lot more. You do the same thing here, push it in. You measure it and go just above. What's nice about these straws, they're easy to cut, no special tools required. You push it in that way. We also have our push and dowels. What they are is they're a little bit bigger in radius and they're more solid. So they're better structure, especially if you're starting to do large cakes. This is probably on the, the small large side where when you start getting into the uh, 18 inch and 22 inch cakes, those are large cakes. And you really, if you're starting to stack, you want support. Same, same way, push it in, mark it. What we're gonna do is cut, and as you get close to the end, kind of grab it so it doesn't go flying. And then the same way here, you just continue to cut. You push it in. Now you're not gonna need as many of those as you would say the wooden dowel or, or the little straw because it covers more area and then you just go around. So that is how the stacking part, when you're stacking a cake on top of each other, how that's going to work. So we're gonna take this cake here and we're just gonna stack it on top. So now based upon the dowel system, that's what we got there. The next part of this, what we're going to do, is we are going to introduce you to something different, and it's called push-in pillars. Push-in pillars eliminate the bottom one because they don't have to be on top of each other like this. So you don't need two plates, you only need one plate. This one here is just one plate, so it takes the place of this part of the pillar, pushes into the cake, so it's like a dowel rod. Here's some push-in pillars. They come in different sizes. So depending upon how much of a gap, and let's say we're gonna use this plate here. We'll push this in and let it go. And in the icing, you'll even see this a little bit better, but you have your little marks here that tell you where you need to push in those pillars. I'll push in a, a short one and how these work is they have this part and then they have this piece that slides in. That way there, depending upon how tall your cake is, will, will determine how much this slides. So it pushes in, it hits the bottom, and then at that. So it looks like it's just that size. If you want the larger one, 
you push this in down to the bottom and then you have a larger one and it still all looks like it's just one piece you don't ever see this bottom part that's tapered and then you put your plate on top that's your push in pillars but I want to show you another push in pillar that eliminates all those sizes this plate and this plate the backs are completely different so you cannot use these with that kind of plate. These are a bakery craft plate and you can only use these kind of pillars with this. How these come, and they either come in white or clear, depending upon what you want. The cool thing about the clear ones is that you can fill them. So if you have somebody who's wanting to do like a Tiffany blue cake or something, you can fill these with icing and then the pillars will become that color. So you don't have to go with just clear or white. What you have here is you have a bunch of pieces where it becomes kind of like an erector set where you just add pieces to make it as tall as you want. If you want a cake that's somewhat tall, you would take these. And what happens is these guys, let me do that this way, push into here this part is going to push into the cake. So if you want a little bit higher, it's going to push into the cake this way, and this is going to go here. If you want it even taller, you just add another section to it. Now what you've done is you went from a short one to a medium one. Now you're going to a tall one, and it's all in, in one system, so you don't need to have a bunch of different pillars for that. So we're just going to push these in here like that. What's nice is these are so forgiving and they're adjustable, which makes it really nice. And then put this guy right here. So that's why you have your cake pre-marked. You take this and these are meant for those to fit right in here like that. You're just going to take this Put it in there. Now what you've got is you've got your push-in pillars. It separated your plates. You have your stacked cake on top of your bottom cake. Now you just take your other cake and you'd want a square board. And then you'll take your cake, put it on your cake board. And now you basically have that if it was on top of that. And that's how you've stacked your creation for your cake. One of the things that's really hot on the market right now is glam ribbon. So I've got my cake. What I want to do is put my ribbon around it. Because it's a taller cake, I could actually put a taller ribbon on it. Or if I want, I can make it the same length. And what I did for those to make it easy for me is I just kind of folded it to get the center. That way there I could get twice as much out of, out of a ribbon. And it comes in many different colors because this was a kind of a silver themed, I thought I'd bring the silver themed cake ribbon. Then we're going to grab our scissors. And this is very easy to put on. That's what's so fun about this stuff is you can just let your imagination, imagination go. And then you're gonna have a lot more people asking you for wedding cakes this. We're just going to take it. We're going to decide how big we want this. It's pretty easy this way. And scissors again. I'm going to cut it. What you want to do is take your gum glue and you just want to kind of paint. You really want to make sure you get the ends the edges so that it sticks nice to the cake. And these come in many, many different colors. And I'm going to do the end. Close this so we don't spill it all over the place. And we'll take our cake ribbon, come here. Well, whoop, and that's why you want it to stick. Then you want to wrap it around. Now generally what I do so that it'll dry on there, I will take corsage pins and I will just stick them right into my cake. 
Then we're just going to let it dry. And I would recommend doing this after your cake is, is already nice on your board so it doesn't slide. And then we're going to come. And you may need a step stool. I'm going to step up here and put our cake up here. And we put the ta-da up there. And then we turn it on. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the series on how to tear cakes and doing our occasional cakes and our holiday cakes. Hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching.